Welcome everyone to the May edition of AZ Bio Peers. Um, this month, we're gonna be talking about talent. And as we continue that discussion, we're gonna be focusing on training because great talent can, needs continuous training. And with us, we have Russ Yelton, um, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of AZ Advances, as well as um, Founder and President of Yelton and & Associates, and a member of the AZ Bio Board of Directors, and Thomas Schumann of the Center of, in, of Entrepreneurial Innovation at Gateway Community College, which is a mouthful, and so we just say CEI. Um, Russ is our moderator today, and I'm going to let him take it away. Great. Thank you, Joan, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're excited to uh, learn more today and share with you some of the uh, really interesting work uh, around lab force. And as, as Joan said, we all know as we're scaling and growing and, and bringing our companies uh, to fruition and commercializing our products, um, having access to the right talent, not only initially, but also making sure that that talent has the keys to be successful is really important. So very excited to uh, have uh, Tom Schumann here today with uh, LabForce. And uh, Tom, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Very good, well, thank you, Russ. Um, and uh, thank you all for coming out to this presentation to learn a little bit more about CEI and LabForce and, and what our plans and visions are for the next year uh, as we launch this new program. You know, many of you uh, know CEI as a business incubator. We've been running a bioscience and medical device incubator here on the campus of Gateway Community College for about 10 years now. And um, uh, I've been here uh, five of those years and uh, uh, having a great time. Uh, we, we truly enjoy the work that we have with the startup companies here. And what we practice here at CEI is something that we call concierge level of service. And, and for us, that means trying to anticipate what our customers' next set of needs are going to be even before they know what those needs are going to be and having you know, solutions and answers and resources in place for them when they get to that point. Um, so one of the exercises that we went through oh, over a year ago now was, you know, what will our clients need two years after they graduate out of our incubator uh, and our, our growing companies? And so that's the question that, that we asked ourselves. And obviously there's two things that growing companies need. Uh, one is cash and capital. You know, and the growing companies are like sponges when it comes to money. They, they need more and more all the time to keep sustaining their growth. But that's nothing that we as a community college can do too much about. But the other need that all growing companies have is for a talented workforce. And that is, you know, in core to the mission of community colleges. So we kind of started taking a look at, you know, what does that mean for CEI and for our clients? And what can we be doing to um, address that need to have a pipeline? So what emerged out of that is a program uh, that we call LabForce. And LabForce is a, a statewide workforce development initiative, primarily for the bioscience and life science industries. Uh, and, and there's really three components to it. One is that there, it's a workforce development program so that we can bring you know, new entry level workers uh, into the industry. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about um, a certification program we've developed in that area um, and even the potential to put some apprenticeship kind of programs together around that to bring new people into the industry. Uh, the other large need is for professional development, and that's the ongoing, you know, upskilling of, you know, the current workforce to keep up to date with new technologies, and in particular in these bio and life science industries to keep up to date with changing, you know, regulatory um, uh, and compliance landscape that, that, that changes. And finally, it's, it's, you know, creating that talent pipeline of, you know, new young people. Uh, that could be interested in the bioscience and STEM and life science careers. Um, and so there's a uh, internship uh, management program uh, that would be part of what we're rolling out here uh, in, in LabForce. Um, we can go to the next slide. So as we did our, our research uh, on what the needs are out here, well, these are kind of the four, or excuse me, five main areas that um, 
the, the surveys that came back from uh, CEOs of bioscience companies said that they needed training in is, is clinical skills, quality systems, uh, bioscience lab skills, regulatory compliance, and entrepreneurship. So that's kind of uh, you know the, the first pass at uh, kind of curriculum areas that we are going to be addressing. And we also know, you know, from this research that there's really a, a big split between uh, companies that want to do their training primarily online. And that's a aspect that's obviously accelerating uh, with uh, COVID and the distributed workforces and distributed uh, employment and such. Uh, but there are all others that, you know, want to be able to do, you know, the, the face to face kinds of things, you know, uh, in some areas it works better uh, to be in a group setting. And when you're working on specific, you know, technical skills or clinical skills, you know, where there's a hands-on component, obviously that's something that uh, you want to do in person uh, with an instructor. So, um, so Lab Force is conceived as kind of, you know, a blended program where we both have the online learning and uh, a virtual learning component. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So for the, the hands-on component, um, we have a new location. And, and many of you are, are, are aware of that. Um, and, and that's the uh, new Wexford Science and Technology Building that's in the uh, Phoenix Biomedical Campus. Uh, we have moved in and we're in the process of kind of finishing out the punch list and getting the systems up and running down there. So it's kind of an exciting period for us to, to move into that building. As we were saying earlier, it's, it's kind of exciting to watch that building slowly come to life now as, as ASU and other tenants are starting to occupy uh, space there as well. Uh, CEI is we're down the, the right-hand corner there in that kind of copper colored area. And, and we really love this location. Um, obviously it's in, in the, the heart of the downtown which, you know, with vibrancy, you know, there's the back door uh, from our building and reaches out into Roosevelt Row area where there's a lot of excitement. But more importantly, it, it's really the heart of the biomedical uh, campus and um, Wexford Science and Technology um, with their uh, university partners, you know, have the vision for, you know, four more buildings uh, in the downtown over the next uh, decade or so um, as they continue to fill up. So, you know, the employment trends that are projected in the downtown in the bioscience space, you know, it's in the thousands. Um, and so it's a critical place for us to be uh, located. It's also going to become more and more kind of the, the heart of the entrepreneurial innovation and kind of startup community as well. Uh, both our program and the ASU program that occupies the ground floor are kind of entrepreneurial focus. So it's the kind of the, the sky song a knowledge enterprise program that's going to be across the hall from us. Um, together, we'll be hosting a event every Thursday night to bring innovators and researchers and creative people uh, together uh, for, for networking and uh, you know, uh, collaboration opportunities. Uh, we can go to the next slide, Joan. Um, there's a little, little schematic uh, of the space that we have down there. It, it's really designed um, as an event space. It's very flexible uh, in the way that we've designed it. Um, you can go from classroom seating to um, theater style. There's a co-working space for entrepreneurs and researchers and such to sit down and have coffee and talk. And we will be running some of our uh, CEI, more entrepreneurially focused programs out of there as well, uh, which we call you know, validation lab and, and we'll be providing some marketing research services out of there. Uh, so a large event space, two, two smaller classrooms that are designed really to hold 16 people. Um, what we do know about training in this area is you know, you're not gonna get 50 people to come out to, to listen to an FDA compliance uh, workshop. It's pretty specialized uh, niche kinds of, of programming. Um, we can move to the next slide, Joan. And then the other half, um, obviously, is, is the virtual uh, side of our, our program. And we have, um, over the last year, really put together uh, a, an exceptional learning management system. Um, and uh, we're going to be able to move a lot of content to a lot of people through there. So it does all the typical things 
uh, that you would expect out of a learning management system in terms of, you know, putting the course catalog, allowing people to register and pay for their courses. Um, but we also have some unique feature sets that allow us to create individual development plans, to do skill gap analysis, and do recommended trainings off of that. Um, it has, as I mentioned, an internship uh, mentor management system. Uh, we have e-commerce connected to it. It's SCORM compliant, which in, in the industry means that it's able to easily move content between different learning management systems. I'll talk about that in a minute. And it's a highly secure and stable platform. Uh, the, the, the company uh, that we're partnering with to, to build this, um, their platform is used by the U.S. Department of Defense uh, in their civilian training. So it's a, it, I like to call it a battleship uh, of learning management system. Very secure, very stable. Um, next slide. So this is kind of what is a little bit unique about our learning management system. And I want to spend a little bit of time uh, on this uh, so that you understand what we're trying to, to put out here. Um, on the right-hand side, you'll see where it says content sources. What we've added to our LMS is the ability to be able to reach out to a variety of third-party content providers and be able to pull their content into our system of catalogs. Or conversely, we can reach out from our side into their LMS and move students into their environment for training and then back. And it's all done in a pretty seamless kind of way. So it really is designed so that we can get access to as much content as possible in whatever kind of variety of methods that we need to reach it. So we kind of see our role um, at LabCourse is trying to find and curate the best in class content and bring that into our catalog systems. On the left hand side where we talk about customer groups, uh, what's unique about our LMS is that it allows individual companies to create their own portal into the catalog system. So we will have thousands of courses that are, are loaded into the catalogs, but a specific company may say, you know, we're only interested in, in these 50 courses and these five we want to assign to our quality team, this training program we want to go to our salespeople, and they can manage it um, uh, that way so that they don't overwhelm uh, their employees with you know, hundreds of choices, but they can get down to the specific learning plans and competency development that they want their individuals uh, to move through. Um, uh, next slide. This talks a little bit about you know, the, the different kind of roles, but I think you know, we touched on it a little bit before, but uh, what this does allow is it allows for a manager uh, in a company to be able to manage both the catalog, the learners, their progress, the reporting and the documentation of all that training inside their own slice of, of lab force. For us, you know, our target market ha has always been the companies that are in that 20 to 100 employee kind of size. These are the, the growing technology companies, the growing bioscience companies. And many companies at that size don't have a full-time, you know, training department. So what we're trying to create here is, you know, a training department in a box, if you will, so that they have all the tools that they need to manage the skill development of their employees and, and their new potential uh, employees. Um, uh, next slide. So we're starting to build out the catalog system. We're moving these courses in as we speak. And we have a couple of key um, third-party uh, content providers that we're working with. One of them is uh, the Life Science Training Institute. Um, and they have over 300 bioscience companies that are both live uh, courses that they offer <clears throat> oh, and, and online uh, streaming courses. They have recently been uh, purchased by a company called Red Nucleus, which is one of the largest training companies in the uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry. So it's brought a whole bunch of additional 
instructional design capabilities uh, and development capabilities to Life Science Training Institute. Uh, so we're getting some really great courses that are, that are coming out of that group. Uh, and then we also are working with uh, Biotech Primer. Uh, many of you may be familiar with them. Um, and we'll be bringing in about 60 bioscience courses from their catalog. Um, and there are a lot of, uh, as their name kind of implies, kind of the introductory uh, training for people new to the industry or moving into the industry uh, to get up to speed on some content. And we'll look at some of their materials uh, in a minute. Uh, so those are two primary providers on the, uh, the bio side. Uh, and the next slide um, is kind of uh, an example of, of one of the programs that we will be getting from um, Life Science Training Institute. Uh, this is their, um, their learning journey for uh, good clinical practices. Um, as you can see, it's about a, a 20 course series uh, from laying you know, the foundations of uh, good clinical practices to how you implement it in your company, to how you uh, tackle advanced training, and then some you know, mock audit and uh, scenario kind of thing as well. Um, this program will be going live uh, in June, um, and it'll be followed in October by a very similarly organized series of good manufacturing practice courses as well. Um, so a lot of uh, a lot of what we're doing in, in our initial launch is going to be focused in the areas of quality science, quality management system, GMP, GDP, um, FDA, uh, regulatory compliance, and those types of things. We find that that's the common denominator across all of the clients that we're working with as a common need, um, and we'll be able to address you know more of the specific technical skill sets. Uh, once we get a larger base of, of, of companies. So for, as we're going out the door, you know, these quality and regulatory compliance courses are kind of where we will hit the ground running. Um, we also have a quality practices for company founders uh, series that we're uh, developing. Um, we've had the, the good benefit of having an individual who was the global director of quality for 3M uh, retire uh, here into the Valley. Um, and he's putting a wonderful series of courses for us on what companies need to do in terms of quality to be able to um, become you know, suppliers and supply chain partners uh, with larger companies. Uh, next slide. This is a course uh, that, that we're developing. Uh, it's kind of an entry level lab technician certification. Um, what's nice about this course is it kind of demonstrates the complete capacities of what our learning management system can do um, because it really is a, you know, a, a blended learning example where a, an individual, in this case, was, you know, learning about how to perform tests and assays and the specific unit is you know, how to prepare samples uh, according to procedures. You can see that there's three levels of learning that they go through. First, it'll be online where they're gonna learn you know, the background knowledge that they need um, about how to prepare samples. Um, they will then come into a lab type of environment, either at the company location or at our downtown training center uh, where they will be you know, uh, working with an instructor and other students to actually you know, prepare samples, you know, the hands-on type of activity. And then finally, at some point they will be on the job and their super will verify that yes, in fact, in this case, you know, Tom has learned how to prepare a sample according to procedures. And so once they've hit all three levels from knowledge, understanding, and application, uh, then we note in the learning management system that that competency is uh, attained. Um, next slide. Then we're also kind of putting together right now what we call our, our workforce uh, development content, our catalog. And, and we are partnering right now with, with two companies to, to bring their company in. Um, one is called eLearning Brothers. Uh, the other is Biz Library. And between them, they have thousands of courses. Um, we're looking at about 300 from eLearning Brothers and potentially 500 from uh, Biz Library uh, to move into the catalog. And you can see under you know Biz Library, you know a lot of the, the, the kinds of topics. It, it's much more general. Uh, it's not bio or life science specific. 
But what it does address is a lot of the soft skill development um, that we also hear, you know, every time we call on any kind of company uh, that they need more work. In. And so this is, you know, the conflict resolution, the problem solving, critical thinking, communication, teamwork, those kinds of skills that, you know, all employees need. So we'll be using these courses to address those types of training needs. Um, next slide. Um, so here, this is an example of uh, some of the courses that um, come from our partner, uh, Biotech Primer. Um, and, and you can see it's kind of, you know, uh, introduction to things like antibodies and uh, uh, medical device commercialization. Uh, these are, again, designed to get people up to speed in a new area uh, that they may be uh, moving into. Uh, and we go to the, uh, the next slide. And Biotech Primer also does live courses that we can deliver through uh, our platform as well. So here's an example of a course they did back uh, in April on you know, business side of, of biotech. So you know, two day master courses. So um, you know, much more in depth you know, topic um, and live. So uh, th th that's a great addition uh, as well. Uh, next slide. Here's an example of, of some of the courses that are coming from uh, the Life Science Training Institute. Uh, these are um, on-demand uh, video-based courses. Um, on, on the left-hand side, you can see the, the whole variety of topics that Life Science uh, Training Institute addresses. Um, and uh, as you can also see from you know, kind of the sample topics here, they're getting into a much deeper depth of uh, material, uh, much more specific uh, and technical than what Biotech Primer is providing. So the two of them work very well together uh, in terms of uh, a consistent curriculum in, in our catalog. Uh, next slide. Uh, and again, here's just a, a sampling of some of the biz library kinds of courses uh, that address the, you know, the skill management. There is a whole new manager training uh, series in there uh, along with these others. And, and we can do the other uh, slide now. Uh, and again, some more of the, the soft skill uh, training topics that are available uh, to, to, to individuals. So, um, I think we can move to the next slide. And that is kind of the uh, end of the, the prepared slides. Um, and I think what um, Russ hopes to do now, uh, engage some of you in, in some, some dialogues. So um, uh, let's open it up for questions and maybe start with any that you might have, Russ. Yeah, thank you, Tom. That's great. I know it's a uh, exciting program. Excited to see it uh, come statewide. So, um, you know, if a company sees this and they go, you know, this is really something I need. Um, how do they get engaged? What do they need to do? What does that look like? Yeah, well, one of the first things they can do is they can give um, Russ Yelton a call. <laughs> Russ knows all about us. But yeah, if, if you look at that last slide, there, there is a, um, uh, a website URL. That'll give you a little more information uh, about the program, but um, most importantly, there's, there's a link there uh, where we'll gather some basic information, your name, kind of training need, um, and then you know, we will follow up on that. You know, we're um, uh, in, the, in the startup world, you know, we're, we're still in the launch phase. And, you know, we're still in that uh, phase where we're trying to learn uh, more and more about the best and most effective ways to work with our clients. So an important thing for us right now is, you know, especially for the, the first companies that we start working with is, is, is for us to come on out and, and, you know, do a more detailed needs assessment, do some requirements gathering, so we'll chill, you know, try and find out how that perfect fit meets between what your training needs are and what it is that we can deliver. So um, um, after you complete the form, you know, we will have someone come out and, and do that needs assessment process with you. 
um, and then we will get back with you with kind of a, a proposal. Here's a customer proposal, of, you know, course that we have or courses that we can find and bring into the learning management system or the courses that can be developed specific to your needs. Um, what's also nice is, um, you know, when I was talking about the, the importation of content, um, we can also bring in um, your content into the LMS as well. So it's not two systems, but you know everything that you are currently doing with your employees can also reside uh, in the same place at, at the same time. Uh, so uh, you know our goal in you know coming out and doing these needs assessment is really making sure that we have a value proposition that's going to work for you. Um, and that great. And, and that's all you can start with, Russ. Yeah, I was just to say one of the questions that always comes up is pricing, right? Yep. You know, what's, what's this going to cost me? What can I expect to pay? So the, the there's a lot. It, it, that's a great question, right? Because as you said, it, it, it's on the front of everybody's mind. We will be dealing with a variety of different content providers. Some will develop, but the majority will come from third-party providers. And each one has a slightly different business model that they work under a slightly different pricing model. The, um, the bioscience courses that will be coming to us from either uh, Biotech Primer or LSTI will range from $75 to about $270. The most common price is around the $150, $179 kind of price per course in, in that world. The, and then the, the skill building courses that would come from eLearning Brothers or Biz Library are a, a different pricing model altogether. And they will start around $25 per course, wow. but they quickly drop in price with volume. So a, a company that is using a large number of, pro, of, of, of courses, um, that price will get down to close to $10. Per course, you know, over time, so it becomes, you know, it becomes a smoking deal, um, and so we're, you know, we're kind of working as, you know, a, a distributor uh, from these courses, um, uh, and we will, we will obviously need to take a small uh, uh, revenue share, uh, but our goal is to to get this out to our clients, you know, uh, as inexpensively as possible. Um, and we also have a, a, a relationship with, with AZ Bio, uh, where AZ Bio members will be provided with a code. And as they come through the e-commerce system, if they enter that um, AZ Bio code, it will drop their pricing by 10%. So there's a 10% discount for, for membership coming through the system. Sounds like a really good deal. <laughs> you, you talked a little bit about uh, customization and I, I know um, from the systems side and um, from what a company could expect that, you know, that can be really important in the differentiation for an LMS. Could you just briefly talk about what that would look like for a company that wanted customization? Yeah, so um, um, the courses that are, are coming to us uh, from eLearning Brothers and Biz Library in particular, um, they are uh, in a learning, uh, in a content development system called Domino. And what we're able to do is reopen those courses in Domino. Uh, we have two instructional designers that are working with us part of time now. And, and we can then um, add in additional content or add in different um, examples or um, different types of materials that you might be doing. So. Um, it, it allows us to customize those individual courses that are coming, um, but we can also create custom courses for, from, from the ground up to, to build something that's specific to um, a need that you may have. That's great. And just real quick, one last question. I'll open it up for everybody else. Uh, obviously, uh, everybody loves new locations, and I've, I've walked through the space. It's, it's great space. Um, I know you're doing training there, but what if a company wanted to come run out that space? Do they have that option to you know, get people off site and do something uh, outside of where they are? That is exactly the way that, that, that we've designed the space. So, yeah, so it, you know, we, uh, it, it is an event space for, for the industry. Uh, and so people are welcome to, to come and rent the space. Um, and I would encourage people, you know, as part of, I know, in October during AZ Bio Week, you know, there'll be some events there at the Wexford building. So um, it, certainly when you're there, then come in and look at our space. 
Um, but if, yeah, if you have an interest for um, off-site meetings, trainings, um, or even entertainment, uh, it, it's a great venue for that. Uh, it is set up with catering type uh, uh, capabilities. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, out the back door is, is, is Roosevelt Road. So it's a great place to come, have an off-site meeting, and then kind of, you know, migrate to, uh, out to the, the nightlife, right, that we can start enjoying again uh, here in Phoenix. Uh, that's, you know, one of the most exciting things that we're looking forward to is um, that downtown coming alive again, you know, later this summer as, you know, COVID restrictions um, ease. You know, if you have not been in the downtown in the last year, um, you're in for an eye opener. It, it, the, the number of new construction that is going on, it, it's amazing. Uh, and it's almost unrecognizable in some of the areas from here. Oh, that's great. Uh, well, let me, now that I've monopolized here a couple minutes, uh, let me open it up for questions from participants. Uh, you can also put a question in the chat box if you like. So just uh, take yourself off mute. All right, so um, Tom and Russ, great job. Thanks so much. Um, Tom, I, I know how hard you've been working on this and kudos to you and your team for getting this done and getting ready for launch. Um, this is not a small undertaking. Who paid for all of this? Good, great question. Uh, this, uh, um, the, the, the funding for this has come from the Maricopa Community College District, the Workforce Development Department uh, that is run by uh, Darcy Renfro, and it's Proposition 301 funding. So it's, it's workforce development funding uh, that comes to the community college system uh, for their use. So that's that's the funding behind it. Um, and, and that gave us the, the, the development funds uh, that we need to build this, uh, a little bit of runway to launch it. And then over time, it does become uh, a self-sustaining um, entity through, you know, through the course sales and uh, events, um, sponsorships and, and things like that. So um, that, that's where it all comes from. You know, we, we had hoped to launch this many, many months earlier uh, than what we have. And um, you, the, you mentioned that it, it's been a lot of work. It's been a challenge with uh, the COVID year. Of, of trying to bring and launch a, a new initiative. So uh, we're glad that we're finally at, at the finish line. Um, the, the advice that we're getting from uh, the college district now is that in September, uh, we can start returning to in-person events, um, limiting it at around 30 in September, but by October, you know, all bets are off and, and, and we're back operating as normal. It's, if things keep projecting uh, as they are right now. So, yeah. Terrific. And, question, yeah. and for those of you that are watching and you know, wonder what Prop 301 is. So Prop 301 is the 0.06 sales tax. So that's six tenths of, of, of a penny um, that is paid by every single person who buys something in Arizona. So that is what has funded over the last 20 years, programs like this one at CEI and our community colleges, programs that have been at the Biodesign Institute, at the Bio5 Institute, at NAU, um, that are spurring and, and really bringing Arizona into this new advanced technologies generation. And um, so for all of you that have ever bought something in Arizona, Thank you for helping us pay for this program. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Thank Tom, you. we do have uh, one question for you. Is there a way for uh, someone to easily view the uh, catalog of courses to learn about what's being offered? Yes, we, we, um, we will be opening up that catalog. Our, our launch date is October, the first week in October. We're, time, we're timing the, the launch of this for AC Bio Week. And, you know, all the activity that's going to be, you know, in, in the Wexford building that week, that's a good time to get the balloons out and, and, and have a little bit of celebration. Uh, we'll be doing uh, soft launches in June. And so in June, um, we can get that link out that will have the, the, the directory of all the courses uh, that are there. And, and more, will, more will become, it, it keeps uh, filling in as we look at other third party providers. Um, and and then, as you know, Russ, we're, we're also looking into some areas kind of outside uh, of bio as well that serve some of the uh, 
um, other workforce development needs uh, here in the state. Once, once people realize that there's this platform that exists that can get content out to different markets, then uh, we're finding more and more uses uh, for it as well. So we are actually doing um, this summer a, um, uh, a CompTIA IT uh, apprenticeship program uh, in the learning management system, which is nice so that we can get the, the functionalities that there to, to manage the apprenticeship program and the hours reporting and things that have to go along with that to comply with, uh, with the apprenticeship uh, requirements. Uh, so, uh, so that's a new nice capability that we're building out this summer. Press, we know what Tom's been doing, but what have you been doing on this project? <laughs> well, I've been working with Tom now uh, quite a while, um, really talking to CEOs across the state, um, trying to understand again, what are those core needs um, and, and bring that together. And I think that's one of the really interesting things about this program that's exciting. It's not just a you know, Maricopa project, it's a statewide project. And so the ability for this um, program to be customized, which I was asking Tom to elaborate a little bit more on, to me is really a big deal because it's one thing to go online, buy a course, you know, put your employee on it, but it's quite another to have your own customized portal. You know, everything is customized to you. And then, uh, Joan, as you know, I'm, I'm really excited about internships. So I'm really excited about, you know, the intern program and, and, and really helping people understand uh, from a workforce perspective, what is my path? You know, how do I you know, get this position, learn this and go there. And this program really does that. So it's something that I've been excited to uh, uh, partner with Tom on and uh, be involved in and uh, hopefully uh, continue here and uh, get this thing launched in October and uh, get a, a lot of uh, use from it because it is quite, as you said, Joan, it's a huge undertaking. Um, you know, this is not an easy project. And, and as elaborate a little bit on, on the internship program, because I know a lot of people, you know, ha have an interest in that. So um, what the system does is it tries to maximize the value of an internship to both the company and to the student who may be on an internship. And, and the way we accomplish that is we, we connect that mentor and that student long before the internship begins and they can begin this dialogue of setting, you know, what are the goals of what you want to learn while you're here? And here's my goal as your mentor of things that I want you to be able to accomplish while you're here. So they come up with a set of mutual kinds of objectives that they're going to work through. And what the learning management system does is it allows you to track completion uh, against those types of things. So it kind of ensures that everybody's going to have, get what they need out of the internship opportunity. And the other piece that's nice is um, we can, can have the, um, the OSHA required training kinds of things preloaded. So, you know, the, the work lockout, tag out, you know, safety um, sheets and those kinds of training that has to happen for PPE and such can all be accomplished before that student arrives at a job site, that they can complete this online. So when they show up at the internship, they have some basic training. Maybe they've taken a course from Biotech Primer on introduction to immunology, if that makes sense for the internship. They've got their safety training done. And I have a set of goals that I'm going to accomplish this next period with, with my mentor. So it really should increase the value uh, of an internship. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. We had hoped to do some summer camp types of activities this summer, um, but with COVID and such, we pushed that back till next summer. Uh, and the good news from that is we've had discussions with um, University of Arizona and TGen, who also do a lot of summer camp type work. And we're gonna try and create a, a common summer camp for bio in, in the downtown so that they can kind of take a flavor uh, of the different kinds of institutions uh, that are down there. So we're really looking forward to, to rolling that out because as we all know, it's a lot of fun working with students in that phase where they're, you know, the light's going off, they're seeing a career, they're, you know, they're getting excited about science and such. So uh, we're looking forward to that coming soon. That's great. And Tom, great question here in the chat. Um, how does somebody navigate uh, the content to create an efficient pathway? As you know, we were just talking about the importance of that, you know, tracking and workforce development. So you got all these great courses. How, how does somebody work their way through that? Yeah. So the, there's um, one of the functionalities in there is, is called an individual development plan. And that's where 
once a company's created their portal in there, they can now say, here are the competencies that this individual needs to develop over time. And we link those competencies to courses. And so that populates a learning path for that individual to, to, to move through. So yeah, because yeah, if you look at a catalog of 500 courses, right, you're just gonna become overwhelmed and, and you know, I, I don't need Amazon, right? I need I need something more specific. And so that that's that part. And it's also part of that process that I mentioned earlier of, you know, we, we wanna get out and do a needs assessment with you. We wanna truly understand what, what your needs are so we can help develop those paths and those content resources that make most sense for you. And there could be, you know, gaps where you know, we need to go find some content. But what we're learning is it's out there somewhere. Someone's developed this content um, and um, we just need ways of, of, of locating it and, and bringing it into the system. One of the projects that we're undertaking is with an organization called Biomaid. And they're one of the uh, Department of Defense funded uh, uh, innovation institutes um, around biomanufacturing. And um, uh, they will be using LabForce as the backbone of the training um, for the workforce development. So that will allow us to reach into a, a large number of companies across the country um, and, and take content to them, but also see what content exists out there inside you know, this network of community colleges and such that are partnering there that we can bring back to Arizona for our clients. Terrific. And you know, when we talk about developing the future workforce, uh, have you guys looked at um, partnering with the community technical education districts or the CTEDs? I know that our, um, you know, our CTEDs are very, very involved in the biosciences and um, they're a great resource for us as we develop workforce and internships. Um, have they plugged in with the system? Joan, not, no, today we not, have not engaged in those conversations, but I think it's a great suggestion. As, as usual, you have a lot of good suggestions, but yeah, that is a logical yeah, next step for us once we get this platform and courses all up and running again. Terrific. Well, when you're ready, we will absolutely get you plugged in because they are awesome. And, you know, at the Arizona legislature right now, we are having discussions about the budget. And part of that is our um, education funding specifically for technical education, careers and career readiness. So I think that, um, you know, especially the internship model uh, module that you're developing being able to track competencies that these students have developed is something that our legislators are really interested in. And um, because they don't wanna just see the money going out, they wanna see the results coming back. And so this is a wonderful tool that hopefully we'll be able to use in multiple ways. Tom answered so many questions in his presentation and did a great job. And um, Russ, I know that you've been actively working with Tom going out and talking to all the companies to make sure that this system is targeted for the actual needs. So it's built um, you know, from a grassroots perspective as opposed to what we want to tell them. And uh, that's the most important part I think of the system is that it was really built based on the needs assessment of the community. And so we hope that it will be an ongoing resource for many years to come. Tom, thank you for your leadership in building this. Russ, thank you for, as always, being on the leading edge of bringing new programs to our community and to all of you joining us today or on YouTube afterwards. Um, thank you for your commitment to building Arizona's next generation workforce. Um, have a great week and we'll see you next month for AZ Bio Peers. Bye-bye.